Hello and welcome to this special episode of Encore's Film Show. It's important to keep that kid spirit alive in you because that's what got you into it in the first place. Jurassic Park, Star Wars, Terminator, E.T. and Indiana Jones. Adult or child, if you've experienced the magic, the awe or the action of these films, you'd have experienced the legend that is today's guest as the go-to man for special effects for Steven Spielberg, James Cameron and George Lucas. He has nine Oscars, the most of anyone alive. Today, we're joined in the studio by Mr. Special Effects, Dennis Marin. Dennis, welcome to the show. Thank you. Pleasure it's a pleasure to, be here. to have you. Now, you're yeah. here for Paris Images Digital Summit as they're not guest of honor, but genius of honor. That's what I hear. I'm a genie. I'm getting a genie <laughs> award. So, uh, interesting. So, welcome. And we're also joined in the studio by our film critic, Lisa Nesselson. Have you ever met anyone with nine Oscars, Lisa? Uh, nine Oscars and a star on Hollywood Boulevard? No, I think this is the first time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've read um, that you knew you, what you wanted to do as early as the age of six, and that was before special effects even existed. How did you know? You know, I don't know. I was just fascinated by it. I had a little still camera that I got from my parents and I shot little plastic dinosaurs and spaceships and stuff then. And there was no future. There was no career in it. And uh, I just kept doing it and kept doing it. And suddenly, you know, when George Lucas came along and we did the Star Wars film, which I managed to get onto that show, then everybody wanted to see these effects movies and that had never happened before. Now you've contributed to signature scenes in the first three Star Wars movies, helped with the innovations in Dragon Slayer, The Abyss, and Terminator 2, and you were the center of the development of the computer-generated dinosaurs in Jurassic Park. Um, we'll talk about that in just a moment, but first of all, let's remind our viewers of the first groundbreaking film in the franchise from we're gonna make a fortune with this place. Now, Dennis, the dinosaurs that we saw there were a crucial cinematic turning point for model, uh, modern visual effects. Did you realize that you were transforming filmmaking at the time? No idea, but George was. George Lucas was coming by and looking at the dailies we were doing and said, you guys don't even know what you're doing here, do you? We were just getting by day at a time trying to survive and make the stuff look real and get it on time for the movie to get released. You know, and it was just, it was exciting. It was an amazing period because we were obviously, though, looking at dailies and seeing stuff nobody had seen before. Indeed. We didn't think would revolutionize things, though. You certainly were, though. Now, obviously, you began doing what you do in the pre-digital era. Could right. you talk about how your profession has changed since you started out and whether you think there's an advantage to having cut your creative teeth in the analog era? I think, you know, it's really, is not about the tool. It's about your imagination and what you bring to the, to the film, what you bring to the shot. So the tool doesn't matter, but I had to learn as I was growing up about tools, plastics, woods, cameras, film, processing, lights, and all that sort of stuff. But when we got into CG, all those same things were needed, but, but in different, as different way. There was, you didn't go buy plastic, but you could make something in a computer that looked like that, or it looked like skin, or looked like a dinosaur, or whatever. So it, everything is put together to fulfill something that's in your mind. And it shouldn't be about the tool. It should be about your imagination. Now, Dennis, Steven Spielberg said of you, Dennis is a builder of worlds, a master builder who has brought aliens down to Earth and dinosaurs back to life in these modern times and who, along the way, invented a whole new cinema language called digital arts. When you look back at all of that you've done, I mean, this is a big question because you've done so many films, is there one effect that sticks in your mind that you're proudest of? Uh, you know, there's so many amazing things, you know, but the, the period around Terminator 2 and Jurassic Park's got to be the really exciting time because that's when, especially with Jurassic, everybody saw the difference and uh, it just exploded. The industry exploded and, and meant more people could do it also because instead of needing all these tools and mills and saws and cameras, you could buy a computer and you could learn a lot of it and do it in your own house. 
It was very exciting times. Well, we're going to um, come back to all of that in a moment, but we're going to talk about some of the week's film releases now here in France. We're going to start with the incredible true story, Spotlight. Um, it's nominated for six Oscars. I was blown away by this film. What did you think? Um, you know, some people think they don't want to see a movie about pedophile priests, but this is not a movie about pedophile priests. It's about hardworking men and women ferreting out heinous behavior and shining that titular spotlight on it in the pages of a major metropolitan newspaper. I loved it from start to finish. I'm, I'm a sucker for uh, anything where journalists just armed with, you know, notebooks and pencils and, and telephone directories and, and conversation among themselves say there's a story here and they just keep digging deeper and they, they get clippings out of the archives and they start putting it together and it's bigger than they ever imagined and it's going to make the world a better place. Um, what the film makes clear is that countless aspects of life in Boston are completely, tentacularly permeated by the power of the Catholic Church and what it took was a new um, editor who was not from Boston and was not permeated by this idea, oh, don't bother, the church is going to clamp down at it anyway, to say, you know, some lawyers have been settling out of court for molestation of children, maybe you should look into that. And lo and behold, there really was a story there. And have you seen this, Dennis? I haven't. I thought I'd seen it, but I haven't seen it yet. I was meaning to, but <laughs> Is that for Oscar I, I, for so everybody loves it that's seen it. Yeah, it's, it's incredible. Now, when you go and see a movie, can you still let yourself get caught up in the pure storytelling? Um, or is part of your brain trying to assess how this or that effect was done? No, no, it's very easy to turn your brain off. I've learned how to do it. I have to do it. So when I sit down in the theater, I just switch it off to like, okay, I'm 15 years old and I'm watching the movie. And are we at the point where anything you can think of can be rendered convincingly or are there still limits to what a viewer will accept, do you think? It depends who you're talking to. I say, no, we cannot do everything. Some people think we can. But, you know, humans are still incredibly difficult and has never really quite been done yet. If anybody wanted to make a human being, I'm not interested in that, but some people are. Okay. But no, there's still a lot of things that are hard to do. Well, another film that's out in France this week is a small British film that's having a very big impact. It's called 45 Years, and the co-star Charlotte Rampling is up for um, an Oscar for her ro role. Tell us more. Ah, well, uh, we have two phenomenal actress, actors in this, uh, Tom Courtney and Charlotte Rampling, who play uh, Jeff and Kate Mercer, who are a retired British couple who are about to celebrate four and a half decades of what academics and gender study mavens now call a cissexual heteronormative relationship and what I would call a straight marriage. But uh, they seem very well suited to each other, but they're British people of their generation. So how can we yeah, really I, I, tell? I mean, the answer sure, is sure, we can't. Sure. Um, and that's why the film progression is so interesting, I think, because barely a week before the party for their anniversary, they get news of, that a dead body has been found in Switzerland. But this is not a murder mystery. It's a mystery about what makes people tick and what keeps people together. Have you managed to see this I've, film? I have seen it. That's a perfect review of it. It's just perfect. amazing. It's Thank really you. fascinating what happens and the way it evolves, and, and uh, it's definitely worth seeing. And you're married to a British lady. That's I mean, true, yes. Does the film speak to you? Personally? Uh, I Maybe so, not as far as our relationship or anything, <laughs> but with sort of like, you know, things that are unspoken. Not, again, not in my relationship, but in sort of, you know, some ways. Now, it's visually a very simple film. Um, do you find yourselves, yourself attracted to films like that, just to have a break from all the incredible effects, or do you actually find them quite dull when you watch them? It depends on the films, but I really love the smaller films. I love films like that like, uh, you know, 45 years, and everything on that scale is another one, great one that came out this year called Tangerine, and it'll be out here soon, and I, I really appreciate those. I started making low-budget films anyway as a kid, and I just love the, the economy and having to deal with, you know, human emotions. All the effects has been like a hobby, but it's turned into a career. <laughs> and I still love those two. And have you had a chance, like, um, I mean, do you see films that you think, that's an amazing effect? I wonder how they did that. Or do you actually, are you like the top of the, your game and nothing can surprise you? No, no, I'm still surprised. Because again, it's sort of about the idea, not so much about the tool. And if the ideas are really like amazingly interesting to look at, then I'm just compelled and say, boy, you know, how'd they really come up with that? That's something I haven't seen before. Okay. So it's not so much, but it's harder and harder to do it now, you know, to come up with something you haven't seen. Because there's so many movies being done, so many effects. 
You're here for the Paris Images Digital Summit. That's a mouthful. And I know you just got here, but when you have a chance to walk around Paris, I think you're going to see that there are an enormous number of digital screens staring at you everywhere, sort of the way Blade Runner predicted. Do you True. think that's making life better, or does that sort of stuff belong in the movie theater looking up at it in the dark with other people? You know, that's a good question. I don't know. I was Last time I was here was maybe 10 years ago or so, and I don't think I saw all the screens then. So, you know, and you're seeing them all over the world. So, you know, it does, I think it maybe distracts from what you want the place to be, but yet there's information on there, and I wouldn't fight it. I mean, that's kind of there, you know. I, maybe they shouldn't be so colorful, though. In a city like Paris, they should just be within the hues of Paris, of the buildings. And Dennis, we're coming to the end of um, the show, but what do you think is next for digital effects? Oh, if I had the answer, uh, there's a lot of virtual reality stuff that's coming, though. People are trying to get into wearing the goggles or whatever to experience. And if you get that in 3D and the whole world in front of you seems like you're absolutely there, it's pretty amazing. And I've seen some of that. We're working on some industrial light and magic also. But it's a very solitary experience. It's not like a film that's, you know, community. So I don't know. And what about you? What's next for you? Are you still working? I work a little bit. I'm sort of half retired and uh, still talk, you know, look at the dailies, talk about them. I, you know, commented on the Star, uh, the latest Star Wars film. and What did you think of that? I thought they did a great job on it. You know, just really terrific. It was a very hard thing to try to figure out where is the right way to go with this movie. You know, are you going to do something brand new? Are you going to do something that's nostalgic? It could have failed. It could have just not hit the right audience, but they hit every audience, and it took a lot of work to come up with it, and they did a terrific job okay. on it. Dennis, thank you so much for coming sure. in and speaking. Pleasure. It's been a pleasure to have you. Lisa, thank you for your opinions on this week's show. Now, Dennis Moran is here for Paris Images Digital Summit as the genius of honour. The event goes on until the 30th of January in Angers, Le Bar, just north of Paris. Now, we're going to leave you with one of this week's film releases, 45 years. Remember our website. We're also on Twitter and Facebook. There's more news coming up on France 24 after this. It really is a great venue for an anniversary. So full of history, you see. Like a good marriage. What is it? They found her. You know who I'm talking about, don't you?